Global warming is, is really a terrible problem psychologically. If you took all the things in the world that people are bad at it, and you combine them into one problem, if you try to manufacture a problem that people would not care about, it would look like global warming. Hello, and welcome back to Pete's Behavioral Insights and Theories, aka Pete's Bits. And today, I want to talk about how behavioral science can help for our fight for a sustainable future. So why is Dan Ariely saying that global warming would be the ultimate manufactured problem for people not to care about? Well, if we look at the research from behavioral science and see what actually makes people motivated to do tasks, what we see is a lot of pitfalls when it comes to feeling motivated about pro-environmental behaviors. As a really basic example, we can think about time delays and the consequences of our actions. Because the effects of global warming are much further into the future, it's actually very hard for us to take action now, because the consequences of our actions seem delayed, and we know from ideas like temporal discounting that delayed consequences are very low motivating factors when it comes to our behaviour today. Secondly, climate change is a mostly invisible phenomenon. Day to day we don't notice big differences in our temperature, nor do we notice dramatic changes to our weather patterns. And so invisible consequences are also very low motivating factors when it comes to our behavior. In fact, a lot of what behavioral science is, is simply making consequences more salient or more obvious to the people doing their behavior so that they can act accordingly and weigh up the consequences of their action more effectively. Thirdly, the consequences of environmental action tends to suffer from what we call the drop in the bucket or the drop in the ocean effect. And what this posits is that basically when we take pro-environmental action, we don't really feel like we're making a big difference to the overall outcome of climate change. Because, of course, our one little action isn't enough to make a huge difference on its own. We need a lot of people to work together to make a difference. But when our individual actions don't have much weight to them, that's also an incredibly demotivating factor when it comes to acting pro-environmentally. And finally, and this is more of an issue for us here in the global north, is that the consequences of our actions don't really affect us necessarily. They tend to affect people farther away. The best estimates for the effects of climate change on the world are that it's going to be affecting the poorest countries the most in the future, leading to only more increased global inequality. But of course, those people far away aren't the people who we see every single day, and so out of sight, out of mind. We don't tend to think about them, and therefore we don't think about how our actions might be affecting their futures as much. And also, global warming tends to suffer from the fact that we don't have an identifiable victim. The identifiable victim effect says that we don't really tend to care much about statistics. Instead, we care more about a story, about an individual, a person who we can rally behind. You can think about the refugee crisis from Syria, for example. We knew that so many refugees were dying from their precarious journey out of Syria, but yet it was only when we saw the photograph of the young boy on the beach, the identifiable victim, did we have a huge increase in empathy from the global community towards the refugee crisis. And it's a similar problem with global warming. And with global warming, because it affects so many people on such a wide scale, it becomes incredibly hard to have an identifiable victim, and therefore, as human beings, it's very hard for us to care as much. That being said though, there has been a recent huge uptick in the attitudes towards pro-environmental behaviours. Since Al Gore's documentary in 2006, sentiment towards pro-environmental movements has increased in Western countries dramatically. Since then, a series of movements, marches, and of course more documentaries, including the very recent David Attenborough documentary on Netflix, has really increased the positive pro-environmental sentiment towards people's attitudes and beliefs. And this is really encouraging, and it's an important first step. And that leads us to a really fundamental concept in behavioral science, which is the difference or the inconsistency between what people say they believe in and what they actually do in real life. But the beautiful thing about our field of behavioral economics is that we can use our field to try and bridge that gap. We know that if we use the right choice architecture, the right nudges, we can get people to actually behave in a way that is consistent with their beliefs. Now I want to talk more about different environmental nudges in future videos, but in this video today, I've invited my friend Samuel Saltzer, who's a behavioral strategist from Sweden, Sweden, to come talk to you about some of the cool projects that he was doing in Sweden to do with sustainability. Check it out. Hello, my name is Samuel Salser, and you're watching Pete's Behavioral Insights and Theories. Perfect. Can you tell me about your interventions that you did in, in Sweden and how that helped uh, for sustainability? I work mostly with Behavioral Lab while doing most of my work in Sweden. And so Behavioral Lab is the first Swedish behavioral consultancy, and so they're doing great work. And while I was working with them, one of the things, one of the main projects that I was lead on was when what we call Deedster. So Deedster is this really great app for really trying to make climate action both easy and fun. So it's making good deeds. So Deedster is kind of the idea. Mm. And they now have, I think, around 300 or 400,000 sustainable actions taken by their users. Nice. And so it's kind of using this gamified approach to both understanding, okay, what is my personal 
footprint? And then how can I take kind of these small gamified actions to, to make a difference to that? I think the biggest challenge at the time when I came in to help them was that they had this kind of fun gamified app, but they struggle with getting these kind of one-time behaviors translating into habits and long-term behavior changes. And it's also that's my expertise in thinking a lot about that stuff. And so it was the work we did together was a lot of thinking really, okay, how can we make sure that when people make an action today, a good deed today, that that deed doesn't go to waste in the sense of just being this one alone deed, but it's the start of maybe building momentum for some identity shifts or some serious shifts around habit formation and so on. Another project that we interested in talking about used as a kind of a very different project, but also relevant here was one that I was part of where instead of working with kind of this user app, it was more towards how to make construction sites more sustainable. Okay. And so one of the things that I try to talk a lot about is just this idea that we're facing a lot about this discussion of consumers that we should be better environmental consumers and we should act better as you know, citizens and individuals. But when we look at the kind of the scheme of things, like a lot of these problems are either coming from bad policies or bad system stuff yep. or coming from practices in the private sector that's not optimal. Mm. And so instead of guilting people for taking too long shower, you know, it's better often to think about how can we make an impact for something in the private sector. And so, so we were part of a big project where they were building this massive new mall <laughs> and, and huge construction sites. And, you know, this, the amount of material they go through on a daily basis is like insane. Uh, and then they noticed this, con- this company that the builders had a really hard time actually sorting the stuff and putting in the right bins. And so uh, anytime that happens, that bin becomes labeled like a mixed bin and that's more expensive for them. And it's also not good for environment as well. And so this part was just about, okay, how can we support, uh, you know, these construction workers to, to, <laughs> to recycle better in some ways, uh, but it would be very big material, like a motorcycle, recycle uh, small plastic stuff, but really like some, you know, big stuff sometimes. Yeah. With that, we couldn't really rely too much on like this immediate positive things because it's really hard to make it fun for a construction worker to, you know, put this iron bar in the iron whatever uh, box and yeah. then making that feel fun and rewarding. <laughs> right, right. It, it, it's going to mostly likely be something, the, the meaning of the person, if you're like playing a sound or you're like, you're so amazing, you know, whatever, like <laughs> a form yeah. of uh, way of, of doing that. And, and so we couldn't really rely too much on that kind of immediate positive reinforcement. And so uh, what that project was much more became about is just thinking about how to make it as easy as possible, like just uh, focusing much on the, the, the ease and also the kind of the, the cue or like the trigger. It's like making sure that people are always activated to think a little more deliberately when they sort. So instead of just automatically just throw things in whatever bin that there is closest, yeah. somehow try to activate them to think more deliberately and then also making sure that it's the easiest thing. So like before when we started, there was like these small bins that they dragged out across the building site. And what happened was that they had these huge bins at the kind of the edges of the site where a lot of the sorting was really being placed. But then obviously what happened was that a lot of people threw whatever they had in the smaller bins. And when the, the smaller ones were dragged to the bigger bins, they just got kind of like thrown into one of them. So there was limited kind of uh, availability of these smaller bins. It's like one of the big things we just did was just like increase the availability of the smaller bins so that people could have uh, and, and make it so that they were brought out to the place they needed to be in a, in a quicker way. Mm. And that was just making it easier. It's like just making it easier, not trying to be like, you know, fun or gamey or like whatever. Right, right <laughs> uh, yeah. Just trust people want to do the right thing and then making it easier for people to do the right thing. And, and I think that had a big effect there. And so just making it like ridiculously easy and clear what the decide action was. That went a really long way. And then we kind of added some stuff there where we added some, you know, and the inside of the, what do you call it, like the bathroom stalls, whatever, there was like this feedback thing where they get feedback every week. So you could see how much uh, recycling, like good recycling they've done. And, and then uh, while they were sitting on the loop, <laughs> 
<laughs> and then uh, there were some like very basic financial incentives, more like things we had in Sweden, which called like a uh, sandwich cakes, which are really popular, uh, that kind of stuff to, to get as like some form of reward when people are able to like have really good weeks or months. Um, so, so yeah, there were some, some basic feedback and, and incentives as well, but, but mostly it's making it easy. All right, thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much to Samuel Salzer for coming on the channel. If you don't know already, Samuel Salzer has an excellent newsletter about behavioral science called Habit Weekly. I'll have a link to the sign up below. You should go check it out. It's been very kind and featured my videos on there a few times, but it has really, really good behavioral science content from all around the internet. So would highly recommend checking it out. All right, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.